you. It's your boy Freeway Rick Ross, and you with the Tigger Report. Jay Tigger, what up? Jay Tigger, what up? Uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just tuned in to a show that is not just a radio show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a show. Live from AcceleratedRadio.net, I am your host, Jay Ticker. Live from the city of Inglewood, home of the champions. The new home of the Los Angeles Chargers and the returning home of the LA Rams. Now, I know I've said this before, and God damn it, I say it every show. But I can almost guarantee you, you will get something out of today's episode because today's show is LIT. What does that mean? Well, let's talk about it because you know what I've been hearing a lot? A lot of fucking excuses. And because of that, I got something to share. That is something that I always have to remind myself of when people come to me giving me problems and issues that they're experiencing. I tell them, don't allow that to impede your progress on the process. Do not impede your own progress through the process. You know why? Excuses are monuments of nothingness. They build bridges to nowhere. And those of us who use these tools of incompetence are masters of nothingness. I'll say it again. Excuses are monuments of nothingness. They build bridges to nowhere. Ladies and gentlemen, those of us who use these tools of incompetence are masters of nothingness. Do you understand what that meant? Let's go a little bit further. Excuses are monuments of nothingness. We say, well, what does that mean? It means exactly what it sounds. Excuses are nothing. They build nothing. They create nothing. Because if you allow something or someone or something to get in the way of something that you intend to achieve, then dear ladies and gentlemen, you probably weren't all in for it from the beginning. You know why? Because a goal is something that's supposed to be appreciated. A goal is something that's supposed to make movement, progress. A term that's been thrown around lately is called trust the process. I think it's hella cliche. I'm actually tired of hearing it. But guess what? That is the most fitting fitting set of words that I've ever heard when it comes to the realization of how important it is to be patient, to take one step at a time and to know that if things are working correctly and then all of a sudden they go south, it doesn't mean it's time to make an excuse. That's the reason why you let go and you quit. I got a perfect example today. DJ E is back in the building, by the way, guys. I want to make sure we give him a round of applause. He wasn't here last week. And as we said last week, we sent our condolences. His father passed away, unfortunately. But his family is always in our thoughts and prayers. Good to have you back, DJ E, bro. I got a woman who is a representation of every woman, or at least she should be. Class, style, educated, focused, and a fucking boss. They call her the president. DJ, it only makes sense that we get this background music. I am every woman. When she walks into the building. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this is what you get when you have a boss in the building. And guess what? She's a woman. COO and president of the LA Sparks. Foundational. 
philanthropist, community assistant, and she always makes it happen for the ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you today, right now at this very moment, Christine Simmons, the president and COO of the LA Sparks, came here to talk to Jay Ticker for a quick minute. In the building, gang. Miss Simmons holding it down for the ladies in the building. Put them headphones on. Let me tell you what you're listening to. Tell me what that is. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Is that what they're doing? Pretty much. Yeah, Already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Christine Simmons, thank you so much for coming in today. We sincerely appreciate your time. We know that you just got off the plane and uh, you, you found a way to make it here. So we must be some type of importance to her. Very much so. Hello. Hello. I appreciate it. <laughs> Christine, we got some questions for you to introduce you to the people who've been sleeping under a rock lately. <laughs> okay. In case you didn't know, guys, we have someone who is the president and COO of the LA Sparks. She is, now, Christine, get, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. the first female president. No, 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 no. They've had, they've had a few. They've before. had multiple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the I've been sleeping under. But a rock. the current. But, but the she current. is the current, and and she will be the forever holder unless she decides to give up that rank. You're too kind. You're too kind. Already. It's an honor. It's an honor. So let's do this. First of all, I'd like to start off by saying Happy Mother's Day. Belated. Thank you. Absolutely. We didn't get a chance to cross that. Yes. Um, Christine, let's get into it. Now. Christine believes in making a difference, guys, in her community. And I pulled a quote from one of the articles that was written upon her. And the question was posed, why does she enjoy doing the community service? Why does she actually take the philanthropic role so so seriously? And Christine replied, I'm passionate about community service. I'm passionate about giving back. Because that's just what I love to do. Yeah. Christine, I've known you for about a year now. Yep. Um, I have to say that that's true. Thank I'm you. able to vouch for that. I've seen you in many fundraisers, um, events. Um, you just going out, bringing the, the team with you. Um, and everything that y- you do in every event or program that you've been involved in, it's always been centered around women empowerment. Yeah. And I don't think that we see enough of that. Um, I think that frightens a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there was a rise and fall of the Roman Empire, correct? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You know, I think we're in a space now where we're working hard to deconstruct all of the social inequities that we see around gender and um, the WNBA and the LA Sparks have been doing it for 22 years now, right? So who better to to lead that charge? And um, the space that we're in for women and for strong women and for women of color is one where we can take back that power that we've had all along. So the fact that we have these phenomenal global athletes that are out there balling at, in day in and day out, right? Um, I think that it's our responsibility to to show every woman whatever whatever it is that she's passionate about what's possible and so that's what we strive to do on and off the court and and in so it's it's our go-to-market strategy it's our business strategy we want to make sure that we're investing in people and then thus they'll give back to us just as much as as we're able to give to them and those are the those are the premises under which we've been leading this organization and it's paid off so far um you guys have been doing a bang-up job um again um i'm now a season ticket holder you are i mean yes (laughs) because (laughs) I love it. Thank you. Um, And the reason why I did it was because I love the movement. See, the one thing about me is that I'm never going to be afraid to spend any money on something that's positive. That's fantastic. Um, And the reason why is because, like, at the end of this program, we'll understand the reason why I went there. Yeah. Um, But it's clear and simple to me. When you see something positive and you have the funds to provide um, so that people can get that awareness and that opportunity to come to a, a, a WNBA game. Some yeah. people haven't even gotten the chance to do that. Right. But to see the Sparks play, yeah. you're talking about the upper echelon, the creme de la creme of the WNBA. Exactly. Um, 
it was a no brainer. No, and I appreciate that because we literally were targeting three different groups of people. And, you know, you have your moms that are like me, sick of watching Ninjago every single day, want to sure. find something fun to do with their kids, <laughs> right? Have to watch that one more time. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Um, but <laughs> then you also have those women that, and some men, but women who don't necessarily know that they're sports fans or basketball fans yet. Sure. Um, but by bringing them in and showing them what these women can do, they're breaking barriers every single day. Then they, they become Sparks fans. And then the third category is those socially co- conscious millennials, which oh, yeah. the OG millennial that you are. Gang, gang. Right. Uh, you know, it's it's you. This, this group of amazing, brilliant young people who understand the importance and the power of their dollar and how loudly that speaks or the absence thereof, right? So if if we see that people aren't doing right and don't have the right values within their corporation and their structure and what they're doing, then we take that money away. That takes our power away. So Absolutely. You're, you're enabling us to have the power and the fact that you're a guy on top of it, you know, we always talk about I'm, I'm empowering young women, but yep. I'm also enlightening young men. And yep. that's a big part of what we do. Absolutely. Um, and obviously you've been doing a bang up job. Look, Thank you. Uh, look, I got to get straight to it. There's a rumor out there. Okay. That was published uh, mm-hmm. that entails you reaching out to a young girl. Okay. Mm-hmm. She simply asked a question. Look, she's scared. It's not nothing. I was look. like, oh, wait, <laughs> did that one get out? Did that rumor get out? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. What she did was she just simply asked a question about the disparities between the WNBA and uh, the NBA. You know where this is going. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, the story is that you brought her in for a day acting as honorary president and COO for a day. Christine, yeah. what was that about? So one of my dear friends connected me to another friend, the power of social media, if you will, Perfect. and on Facebook and said, hey, my daughter was watching basketball and she asked, why is it that the women don't get as much exposure as the men? And I literally, my, my joke was she's a future COO. And so I had her come to the game. She sat courtside with me. I literally had her, had her shadow me the entire game. And then that started our program and it's COO of the day. And so now young women get to sit next to me courtside with their family. Families and, and they first get a VIP tour. They get to meet all of the amazing women behind the scenes. And then I literally point out to them everything that I'm thinking about and looking at as far as the business of this this game. And and so um, and then they get to ask me questions along the way about my journey. And they don't all want to be uh, the president of a basketball team. Right. You know, the last one was this brilliant um, young lady who was a doctor, but she's uh, a doctor and she lives in Watts. Um, and so Amen. and she was shy and, and timid and but every now and then she would slip me a question and I would be able to share knowledge with her and so if there's one if there's just one piece of knowledge I can share that will allow her journey to be slightly easier and better and have a, a larger trajectory than mine then then that's my responsibility so it's been a phenomenal program we're excited about it Christine that sounds like a lot of power for one person <laughs> Are you sure you're not a Freemason <laughs> no no I use my powers for good and not evil <laughs> I, all right, then I digress. We ain't going to go there then. Look, most of the time, the general public only gets the opportunity to see the face behind the brand at most games. So yourself, of course. The press box sitting around with their homies, most of the presidents and COOs that you see in the uh, professional organizations in the world of sports. Um, not you, though. Yeah. Um, you're working just as hard as the guy at the ticket counter. Yeah. And that's something that I noticed. I mean, you are literally walking around. I'm like, man, I know her feet hurt in them heels. <laughs> Like for real, like you are literally, if not in the players' lunchroom, you're you're uh, uh, in the media room, or you're walking down the hallway, going to uh, I don't know where the the, the court. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, she moves around quite often to be a president yeah. of a professional sports organization. Yeah. Um, so I admire that about you, and I, you. that's something that I noticed. Um, what's a normal day though? There is no normal days. I mean, it could be anything from ensuring. So what you're seeing is that I'm ensuring every aspect of that game is going well and that all, you know, the groups that we've we've provided transportation for and opportunity to come to the game are going to be there and that our sponsors are well taken care of and that everything that's on the Jumbotron is what's supposed to be on the Jumbotron wow. and that our media is well taken care of. So all of those things are under my purview. Um, so game days are, are pretty interesting all, all the while. Usually my son is, is driving me crazy and running around. He's the co-president. So <laughs> I love it. He too. literally says that. You um, guys have a beautiful relationship. Thank you. Uh, thank yeah. you. He's pretty awesome. Um, but you know, when, uh, when I'm not at the arena, 
you know, it's pitching sponsors, it's uh, negotiating broadcast deals, it's uh, payroll, it's audits, it's all, everything it takes to run a business. I basically wear all of those different hats. So amazing Penny Toller. She's everything on the court. Our general yeah. manager, another a powerful African-American woman. That, Penny is firm. She's, she's sick. She's, Penny, yeah. Penny don't play no she don't games. Play. She don't play. <laughs> You don't want to mess with Penny. Yeah, no, no, that's real talk. Penny Toller is the boss. And um, also, you know what? Um, you said checks, making sure that people's the payroll is good. Yeah. Has anybody ever came to you like, my fucking check ain't right? <laughs> <laughs> that's any business, you know? I mean, when you have that many employees from time to time, things, you know, it happens. It happens. And, and so you just make it right as soon as you can yeah. and let them know that they're valued. Um, and that we appreciate all they do. And I have a very small business. Uh, so year round, I have about 20 employees that make Word. this thing go. Uh, when we're in season with all of the entertainers and dancers and stats and players, we get up to about 120, 130 people. So that's really a small organization if you think about you know trying to maintain the same type of brand and presence that the Absolutely. Lakers and the Clippers have. So that's why you see me all over the place because I need to have eyes on everything because oh, it's such a small boy. organization. So, so mistakes happen. But again, I do my best to try to get around and talk to everybody so they know that they're part of this family uh, because it's important we are all when whether you're season ticket members our fans our staff the Staples Center staff we want them to feel that that level of, of family because it has to be different it has to take an extra uh, touch or an extra um, uh, graciousness mm -hmm. uh, so that way people understand that this is a very special product yeah I think that helps a lot I think um the game that I came to was the first WNBA game that I've ever uh, came to um, versus the Lynx. Uh, we won. Okay. This was last season? This was last season. Okay. This was, uh, I think, the last game before the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. You guys, it was a sellout crowd and mm -hmm. everything. And I, you guys provided me with 50 tickets. Yeah. That's what happens when you're an ambassador. <laughs> gang, gang. You guys know nothing about that. <laughs> And everybody came through. Everybody enjoyed it. The seats it. were perfect. Okay. They Like my cousin, I remember last week, I told him, I was like, I'm a season ticket holder. He was like, oh, okay, where are your seats at? I was like, oh, they pretty close, bro. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. pretty much, you like them. Yeah. And then he was like, I don't know, bro. Those seats we had last year, <laughs> just the ones out of the 50. They was yeah. like, man, those seats were the bomb because yeah. they were literally, um, they were, I think the second level or something like, I'm not sure how yeah. the, you know. And it was right near the glass. Mm -hmm. So basically, you could see everything and no one standing up in yeah, front of you. So yeah. they liked it. Yeah, you're talking about our We Are Women game. So that's the game where we um, work to sell out Staples Center completely, all around women's empowerment and wellness. And um, and we depend on ambassadors like you to help get the word out and, and, again, show the power of that dollar behind this amazing product. And so it was a sellout game. It was versus Minnesota. We won. It was fun. Actually, the week prior to that, we had released our, uh, our Sorry video. Video, uh, our Beyonce remake. Did. Yeah, did. Yeah, did. yeah, it was a big week. <laughs> we had a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> Got a million hits on the Shade Room. Shout out, shout out. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she bragging Don't too. Sleep. Hey, come wait a minute. The come president come got tricks up on her sleeve. Understand who we're dealing on. with. A boss in her own right, guys. Christine, college, school. Most students wake up dreading the neck, the fact, the fact that they need to wake up and go to school three to five times a week. Um, personally, when I began, I had no clue at all what I wanted to do besides play football when I was in college. Um, always had the intentions to become a sports agent. Um, what was life like as a student for Christine Simmons? <laughs> go Bruins, number mm -hmm. one. Go mm -hmm. Bruins. Um, <laughs> Here we go. See? All day. All day. Can we get an eight clap? I mean, let's oh, go. No. Let's get it. Emmett, if you do it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my. Uh, we, we gonna stay tight, I mean, me and you. Me uh, and you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Oh, I, ain't, I ain't hating. Go ahead. You know, my first memory at UCLA, and I've, I've shared this with a lot of people, I remember it was a hunger strike for the Chicano Study Center. And I was like, okay, I, okay, I see what, I, I see what my mm -hmm. future holds. And so it became advocacy. It became serving my community. It became diversity and inclusion. And so even though I was pre-med, um, I was constantly out tutoring and I was in Watts. I was on Crenshaw doing hypertension screenings, all of that type of stuff, because that was my go-to. That was so fulfilling for me. Was that scary for you? Because you're from Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> so was that your first time? <laughs> wow. Okay. You know what? I'm going to rep the 909. You know what? I'm going to rep the 909. Yes, I'm from Cucamonga. What? Rancho Cucamonga, 909. 
Go no, ahead, Cousin I wasn't Elroy. Scared. And everybody else, yeah. I was not scared. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, well, it was a good experience for you. It was fantastic, yeah. and I think it shaped who I became and who Amen. I was. So when I didn't get into medical school, um, so that's what happened. That's, that's what happened. I was out <laughs> organizing and volunteering a little too much. I should have. Been Is that what you call it? More. Yes. Okay. That's what I was doing. All right, I was cool. No problem. Um, Look. But, you know, that's I, the president guy. <laughs> <laughs> I worked my way through school. Mm-hmm. Um, I learned the skill sets that I, I use every day today. So, whether it's recruiting people to get engaged and do something about an injustice, that's sure. literally what I'm doing today, right? Mm-hmm. So, those are the types of, of skills that I learned outside of the classroom at UCLA. Mm-hmm. I think because UCLA is so big, nothing is handed to you. So, you have to fight. You got to grind. Super you gotta, huge. You know, you got to do it. And so that taught me creative solutioning and survival skills that, you know, you don't learn in the classroom. So all of those things shaped me to who I, I am today. So I, le- I loved UCLA. It was a fantastic experience for it's me. It's funny that you're so modest because we know that you also participated in other things. Uh, you worked with minority-owned businesses yeah. to help them compete for corporate business contracts. Uh, supplier diversity created strategic alliances for companies like United Technologies, yeah. uh, Disney, yeah. uh, NBC Universal. <laughs> Come on, Christine, stop <laughs> acting like that. Talk to us. Uh, you know, again, that advocacy, that diversity, but in the business realm. So, um, supplier diversity is a fantastic industry, and it's creating large minority women, LGBTQ, veteran-owned businesses, disabled-owned businesses, and making sure that they are. Are getting opportunities to compete for contracts at these major organizations. So within the corporation, I would consult with these businesses, help grow them, um, help them compete, and then uh, had the joy to watch them grow their businesses and then employ others as we went. So um, that's when Irvin first recruited me over when I was at Disney. Uh, he has a food service and facilities maintenance company, and hmm. he um, actually feeds the employees at Disneyland. So I helped wow. him uh, get the opportunity to bid for that contract. And that is the homie. <laughs> He's got a that lot going is on. The homie <laughs> still has still has a contract. Yeah, Damn, yeah, magic. Disneyland, Disney World. Yeah, all the employees eat his food. So. Has Has anybody ever asked Magic? Now I know this is, sounds crazy, but it ain't crazy to me because okay. I'm this guy. Okay. Let me hold some. <laughs> I'm sure many have asked. Because he doubt. definitely got it, but you doubt it. He. Uh, I doubt. You know, reciprocated. I, I think uh, you know Irvin's businesses have evolved, and his and he hires amazing people around yeah. him, and they help uh, consult him on on how to invest his money, but also how to leverage other people's money. Nice. Nice. So, so uh, yeah, so supplier diversity got my start. Um, he recruited me over to come work for him. And the rest is kind of history. Very nice. Yeah. Um, how was how did that feel? Because mm-hmm. you're talking about somebody. You, okay. <laughs> this is not arguable. You're talking about the best point guard in NBA history. Yes. Okay. One of the biggest entrepreneurs in the in the world. In the world, intergalactically. Yeah. 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 That's deep. <laughs> Christine, what do you feel like? What was like that? Like, why me? Like, right, yeah, no, I was so blessed um, and that he gave me a shot. And, you know, on paper, especially when we get to the Sparks opportunity on paper, I didn't qualify for this job, but he I had been working for him previously um, and had, you know, many mentors in his organization. And so I was able to demonstrate what I what I was capable of doing. And he gave me that shot. Mm. So he's a visionary. He's a he's just as competitive off the court as he was when he was on the court. Um, true story. We had won the championship and it was me him and penny on the on the floor and hadn't even raised the trophy yet what championship was this uh, the 2016 wnba hello championship go ahead this i'm sorry did you did, no oh, dang oh okay. dang oh, you see that camera right there right. that one this go one. ahead and do that to that mm-hmm. yeah that happened mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. anyway so <laughs> 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 so we just won and hadn't even lit the trophy yet. And he was like, so you ready to do it again next year? And we were like, dang, like, can I get some champagne? Man, you know what I'm saying? Can I, like, can, I magic? can I get some confetti or something? See, damn. And then we all kind of looked at each other like, yeah, let's do it again. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. so he's, com- he's competitive and then he attracts and recruits those that are competitive like mm. him. And, we all, and, and, it's, and there we go. Who is doing a fantastic job as president of the Los Angeles Lakers, by the way. Mm. Gang, gang. Uh, Let's go ahead and let's segue. The L.A. Sparks just had a recent win yesterday over the Washington 
mystics. mystics. Yes. Ooh, scary. Because they actually got <laughs> pummeled. Yeah. 97 to 86, victory for the LA Sparks. Go ahead, DJ E, hit me with that. Yes, sir. Collected a season high of 29 assists for the team victory. Candice went for 23-7 and 11. Yep. Um, we had six players in double-digit numbers. Um, we also had Alana putting up 10 in the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. To me, that is a recipe for a victory. Yeah. That is a recipe for a championship team. When you can have someone like Alana, who is a defensive-minded player, yep. come in and in crunch time, because they were getting really close in between that one minute, that last minute and 30 seconds. They were. Too close. Too close. So that right there, Christine, yeah. shows me that you guys have the key ingredients to mm-hmm. get to the next level, which is back to that championship repeat. That's what you know. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, to your point, Elena was Defensive Player of the Year last season. Um, she's phenomenal. You, if anybody ever, male or female, wants to learn defense, come watch Elena play. You ain't lying. It's, I mean, it's just beautiful. It's true. Um, and so that's the depth. So Penny worked really hard in the off season to make sure that we had the depth. The core came back. Um, they're all superstars in their own right. Uh, but to see them all be able to deliver and, and see the chemistry come out. You also saw Raquana Williams come through. Uh, Odyssey Sims, like, she, sure did. she came back again, you know, so, and those are breakouts, you know, breakout Love stars. Odyssey, by the way. Odyssey's, if if, if, yes. if it's possible. Okay. Uh-oh. Where's this going? See, look, there we go. See, there, there we go. go. There we go. Hey, asking for a favor. Right. right. <laughs> trying to hold backs. Just right. looking. Mm. Trying to get look. it, trying to get hooked up. You know what I mean? <laughs> look, I need to talk to Odyssey, though. Because I think she's dope. She's amazing. Yeah. So she's that's phenomenal. it. Okay. No, that's all I, all right. I, I didn't ask for nothing. Is that this. all? All right. Uh, anyway, let's move mag- forward. Trying to hold Magic's duffel bags and stuff. <laughs> On the low. Right. <laughs> Listen, the team is currently at 7-2. and two. Yes. And um, I, I truly think that uh, one of those losses was due to the fact that you guys were insufficient as far as players. Definitely, um, yeah. You know, Candace was out. Uh, you said that uh, Gentel, Gentel was in uh, Turkey. She was in Turkey. Yeah, yeah. so it, it, things happen. Yeah. Um, you guys are still in first place. Yes. I would say that again. <laughs> you guys are still in first place. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Neneka right let's, now is killing. Let's knock, let's knock on some wood. Okay. But yes, Neneka is killing the game right um, now. Averaging 17.5 right now per yeah. game, 59% from the field goal uh, from shooting. Uh, she's yeah. 89.7% from the free throw line, which is amazing. She's, You know what? In 2016, the year we won the championship, she was the most efficient basketball See? player period, mm-hmm. male or female. And in that same list, the top 10 were all men and they were all like center. So most of theirs mm, were dunks. Of course. And you know, she's yeah, a slasher, right under the basket. Right? Yeah. She's a slasher. She makes it happen. So to have that level of efficiency in a player uh, while you're creating opportunity there you go, um, and getting banged up, I don't know how many stitches she's gotten in that. Seriously. Like literally. No. So uh, just, just shots out to Neka. Like she is such a tough tenacious player on she the is. court and just brilliantly articulate and pleasant and such a great leader off the court. She's amazing. Let me tell you something. That's one of my favorite players right now. Yeah. Now, of course, Candace is the OG. Yeah. You know, and she still puts it down. She does. Uh, she is the Kobe Bryant of the Sparks. That's mm. what I like to call her. Mm. Um, and then Neneka is right there. Neneka's She's great. like the Paul Gasol. Yeah. Like, you know, but just more aggressive. Yeah, for sure. You know sure. what I mean? Like, like a lot more aggressive. Yeah, I guess okay, I shouldn't yeah. say pal. <laughs> sorry, pal. Uh, we can no, Sorry, you know, Neneka. I mean, you know, pal's great. Pal, pal's great. Um, In his own right. But Yeah, but, she's kind of, we, we call it James Worthy. James Worthy. Yeah. What about Michael Cooper? Cooper. Yeah, she, she can do a little. Yeah. Well, Coop was more defense, more, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, I like that. James Worthy. We'll okay. stick with that. Look, Thanks. am I getting schooled in my own show? What the fuck is going on? Just <laughs> Look, the missus is hating. Just saying. <laughs> anyways, yeah. because of that, we got a segue. So. <laughs> 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 See how guys do. Trey now we're going to segue. <laughs> when he's wrong. Look, I want to talk about something, guys, really fast. Um, I got this hot ass kick. Um, it's called the Tick Kick of the Week, DJ E. Go ahead and drop my music what for got? me. Mm. The tick report. The tick report. Okay. The tick report. I just feel like every time I hear this, I want to rap. I just ain't got no bars, so it don't work. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today's Tick Kick of the Week is the Puma slash Sega Sony the Hedgehog. That is Sonic the Hedgehog, that is. This is a collaborative um, partnership with Sega and uh, 
Puma. What we have right now is the Puma RSO. Sonic takes inspiration from Sonic the Hedgehog and the world he protects. Now, Puma is paying homage to the popular video game character Sonic the Hedgehog with this early summer release. The release date is set for June 12, 2018 at a retail price of $130 alongside the release of the Puma RSO Dr. Eggman, portraying Sonic's arch rival. Now, the vibrant surf, the web blue, is textured suede covering the entire top of the shoe, which represents Sonic's fur. The upper of the shoe also features micro ventilation perforations, embroidered Puma form strip, the boss of Sonic's head, and grass print heel embody the familiar terrain on which Sonic roams. Guys, the lace ends feature metallic gold rings similar to the ones collected by Sonic in the video game and the sole is translucent red rubber extending to the outsole with a Sonic logo under the print in the same red as the shoe Sonic sports himself on the video game. Inside the tongue label is the collaboration logo and RSO binary number branding. Now Puma collaborating to bring back this iconic video of Sonic the Hedgehog Kicking Dr. Eggman's You know what <laughs> Guys that has been your Tick Kick of the Week That is the Puma and Sonic the Hedgehog Collaborative Shoe It is now priced at a MSRP of $130 And I do believe It was released Or will be released Wait a minute It was released June 12th Nice. So go get a bar Go get them So what we're going to do, guys, of course, you're listening to the Ticker Report live on AccelerateRadio.net with Miss Christine Simmons, President and COO of the LA Sparks. We're going to go to a break real fast. We'll be right back. You listen to the Ticker Report. We'll be right back. Yeah, you're pretty, but show me what's beneath your surface. Ticker Report. Ticker That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you are back live from AccelerateRadio.net. I'm your host, Jay Ticker, at the Ticker Report on Accelerating Radio. In the city of Inglewood, hanging with the lady of the hour, the first lady of Los Angeles, that's what I like to call <laughs> okay, it, wow, president awesome. and COO of the LA Sparks, Christine Simmons. How you feeling? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. No doubt. I appreciate you for showing up because there are times when people don't show up, Christine, in case you weren't aware. That is terrible. That is terrible, but you made it and we thank you. We want to talk about what happened with Genie Bus. Mm. Now, it wasn't a big deal, but guys, in case you haven't been tuning in, this is a segment we like to call In Case You Missed It. So basically, this is a collection of things that transpired throughout the week, and we want to basically share these things with you guys in case you missed it. Christine, Genie Bus, the owner of was co-owner. She's owner and she's also president of business operations for the Lakers. Hello. Yes. She sent out a tweet. This tweet went viral mm -hmm. because no one understood where she was coming from. Mm -hmm. But guess who did? He did. <laughs> <laughs> she mad. <laughs> Look, she <laughs> she sent out a tweet and in this tweet it says, "Do not ever underestimate period 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 mm. nothing else to say drop mic, the mic drop just drop the mic what could she be talking about christine you are the coo and president of the la spark i know you got some inside information it would only be dope if you dropped it with us i got nothing <laughs> 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 I got nothing. And if I did, I would still have nothing. <laughs> I'll tell you guys Sorry. this. Yeah. Um, this is what's going on. Um, and, of course, this is coming from the tick. Now, I've been doing my investigations, and I have my sources as well. And I'll tell you what it means. Hmm. Uh, now, I this is obviously an opinion. This is not factual. But I put one plus one, and I got two. So, with here, this is what you have. You have the greatest NBA drama this summer. Dun, 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 dun. I was hoping you had that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I got you. God. I got you. Damn it, E. You let her beat you? Come on, bro. <laughs> I'm 
taking all your jobs. I'm taking his job. I'm taking your job. You're doing great. Ain't that You're about hired. a flip? Hey, this is too much women empowerment, and I got to get out of here. See, I was Run trying to put y'all on, on right Evan. now. Who run the world? <laughs> Come on. Don't do it. Thank you, E. Oh, Come oh, on. We oh, need to. Oh. Let's level it out, balance it out. Let's make sure that everybody has equality, okay? Let's see. They trying to look. You give them a little bit, and they take a lot. Oh. See? You better watch out. <laughs> I'm just saying. I see you, Mama. Listen, I got, you. I got your back. Yeah. You Moving can... forward. Oh, I'm sorry. Where you do... you were in the middle of something. Um, this basically means that <laughs> the best NBA drama has yet to been seen. To be seen. Um, LeBron James is going to land somewhere this season. And if you've been following the ticket report on Instagram, you would see that I shared the news, the breaking news, that LeBron James will be in Los Angeles, California for the upcoming season. Christine's looking at me like, how do you know? <laughs> she must don't know. She must so, don't know. <laughs> so with that being said, if the Lakers trade Lonzo Ball along with Luau Dings, contract just to free up some cap space mm -hmm. guess what they'll get what three superstars mm. lebron himself cp3 mm. with the, that trade the other cp3 the other cp3 come on candace mm. i wonder how she feels about that she embraces it it's all good yeah and you also have the third edition. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. That was four. Four. Well, no, it was LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George. Oh, okay. Yeah, gotcha. we got rid of gotcha. Lonzo. Remember, okay. we okay. traded him. Okay. Yeah, okay. this is just a scenario. I got you. Okay. <laughs> Hypothetically. There you go. Hypothetically. So, San Francisco also elected a new mayor. Mm -hmm. DJ E, I had a song playing in the beginning. Mm, who run the world? Wait a minute. Oh, sorry. I had a song. Playing in the beginning. This is going to make the women in the building jump through the roof. Because right now, as we speak, there is a new elected mayor. And she goes by the name. I, that is correct. I said she goes by the name of London Breed. In case... You guys have been sleeping under a rock. Miss London Breed is not only a eligible woman, a knowledgeable, educated, proficient, perfectly placed Christine Simi. She's singing in the background, guys. So if you hear someone singing while I'm talking, that's definitely Christine. She wishes. <laughs> I wish I could sing. I'm lip syncing the heck out of it. So what we have, guys, is a new female mayor in the state of California, and she runs one of the biggest cities in America. Yep. San Francisco. She came upon this opportunity. She will serve until the year of 2020. Uh, and she was brought in because, rest in peace, Mr. Ed Lee, Mayor Ed Lee, that is, passed away in December at the age of 65. So that was our in case you missed it moment. But we will emphatically expand on what we were talking about. I'm going to go ahead and move forward. And let's talk about something that's been going on. It's called a trade and Christine I'm sure you're familiar with these trades there was an NBA player proclaimed superstar by most experts goes by the name of Kawhi Leonard mm -hmm. San Antonio last few days this has been the headline story yeah. Christine I just gave you a scenario. The Lakers trade Lonzo Ball. Mm -hmm. They acquire CP3. Paul George. And LeBron James. 
Will they have enough room to acquire these four players on their roster <laughs> by the 2018-19 season? <laughs> <laughs> Ah! They're going to have to do some serious, serious, serious moving around. I mean, you know, you've seen players. I mean, even on, on our squad, you have players that are always willing to uh, make sacrifices to mm -hmm. be in a place they want to be for mm -hmm. the reasons they want to be there. So I think all of these phenomenal players and these, these franchises are going to have to determine what the missing piece is for each of them and figure out what they need to do to get there. Um, so, you know, is it possible? Anything's possible, I'm sure, you know. I think that um, today's athlete is – is very unique and evolved. I think that, um, they, you know, they are looking, they're almost, you know, taking the urban blueprint and it's saying, true. okay, I'm playing now, but what does the, what does my entire career and I life look like? Right. So, love it. so yes, championships matter. Um, but you know, also the franchise culture matters and the network in the city and the place that they raise their families, all of these things matter. So, you know, I, I, no one can, can tell you what Jeannie and Irvin and all of the, the brilliant minds over at the Lakers are going to do i certainly mm -hmm. cannot however you know like i said i think it's possible and yeah. you know you have players that that make sacrifices to be on fantastic teams and the lakers franchise is one that we all know and love and we all grew up with and the legacy that the lakers are regardless of the fact that you know maybe they've been a championship drought for a minute they still have tons and tons and championships and so they are la so other than us of course there you go come on now <laughs> come on now. <laughs> 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 Last franchise to win a championship in Los Angeles, just saying. Damn. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> What's that, the facts? Just dropping facts. So so that being oh. said, you know, you, you never want to see a franchise and a player have challenges. You always want them to be able to part ways with, on good terms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've seen it a couple times, Isaiah Thomas and now yeah. Kawhi Leonard, and players are unhappy. Um, it's never a franchise in, it franchise's intent, I'm sure. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. I ain't making no, I don't, I don't know. No um, proclamation? No proclamations over here, but well, I'd love to see my Lakers back on top. I'm sure you would. I would too. Um, so what happened was is a few weeks ago, um, depending on when you guys get a chance to look at that Instagram post, I can't really go for the date. Yeah. But there was a few text messages and emails that I received from those in the entertainment industry. Hmm. Uh, and LeBron James, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the fact that he has an entertainment company. He does. He actually is well endowed in the entertainment industry. Um, most of his businesses reside in where, Christine? Los Angeles. Okay. And because of that, I have been getting information that is essentially claiming that he has started to expedite his business services. Mm -hmm. For them to prepare for his upcoming arrival. And I've also received some information that everyone else received. Mm -hmm. Which was a cosign from the one Gary Payton. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you the, the problem glove, with the, that. The Mr. Glove. The glove. The guy with the Nike shoe with the zip up joint. With the, <laughs> I had him. But I had to... Pay for a, a used pair because I was poor and I was broke and it's yeah. all good. Been Nobody there. would never know. Been there. No one would I know. I had to clean them up. Good toothbrush. You already know. Good as new. Hey. So, um, oh, Christine, fun fact. Fun fact. You're mixed. I'm mixed. Yeah. You, your mom is what? A skinny, blonde, white girl from Oregon. Who would have known? <laughs> we look just alike. Too. They, they do. Funny. We do. Spitting images. Yeah. I just thought I'd let the people know. Okay. That was a fun fact. Mixed people. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, Diversity. <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Um, so with, I, got, I have three Mexican and white sisters, too, by the way. Yeah, it's just it's like the Rainbow Coalition. It's beautiful. That is your mom's. My mom's first husband was Mexican. Boom. Had three girls uh -huh. and married my dad. Had me. It goes on and on from there. I have a younger stepsister who's mixed, too. You don't know if you're having tamales or gumbo at Christmas. We just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. That is definitely a thun, thun, thun moment. Look. Um, KD got another ring. Yes. He did. Golden Congratulations State. to the Congrats. Golden State yes. Warriors. You brought a championship back to the state of California. Yes. So for that, we will definitely give you acknowledgement. Yep. But what's next for KD um, in his career? It's 
a good question. Um, I mean, what more can he accomplish? I mean, you can always get more rings. Sure. I mean, I mean there's that. Huh? You know, I think... <laughs> <laughs> Spoken from a true champion. One right? can never have too Fuck. many rings. <laughs> I, I think it's, you know, as, as these amazing athletes continue their careers, and I think everybody always wants to go out on top. So, you know, I think he'll see what the next season provides, what his team looks like, and I think then, you know, he'll figure that out. But, you know, I think, like I said, they're all evolving, so I'm sure he has a few things in the works as well outside of basketball. They all are just doing fantastic things. Um, so I hope he gets another one, and then, you know, after that, if he wants to lace them up and hang them up, then I think it's a good time. Wow. He said 35. You yeah. think that? It's going to come to fruition. It's hard. You know, it's crazy. Katie is like a, a – he's such a – Beautiful Dawson. freak of nature for as a basketball player. Like, what kind of seven footer can shoot threes <sighs> like that? I know. I mean, come on. Like, yeah. that's just so. You know, I think he's not your typical big man. So I think that he'll be able to stay in the league, you know, longer than most. Yeah. Um. So I, you know, as long like I said, as long as they can go out on top, that's what I always want to see. Is I want. I'd yeah. rather them, you know, sh- have a shorter career and go out as they choose mm. than go out with an injury and not as as they had wanted to. Sure. Do, you know what I mean? Um. I like what the Warriors are doing. Um, Recently, guys, if you've been listening or watching the news, uh, there has been a problem within the Los Angeles Lakers organization. There was a diss track that was placed on the internet by who other? Lonzo Ball. And this was in retaliation of uh, with his teammate, Kyle Kuzma. Uh, The Lakers had a problem with it. They had to actually get both players, have a conversation with them to inform them that hey guys you may want to tone it down a little bit because the media is under our ass right now yeah um let's go ahead and give everyone a snake a sneak peek or a (laughs) snippet of that song this is a diss track lonzo ball on his teammate kyle kuzma i think it was fantastic who are you without zo2 just another dude with a bunch of tattoos you ain't got no shoe, Nike wins, cools lose, claiming that I can't shoot, but all these words is hitting you, boy you talking crazy, why you trying to play me, you ain't on my level, you ain't famous as my baby, I'm working out daily, but I ain't posting it, and I would never stop a workout just to post a pic, you let them gas you up, thinking that you can't be touched, coming from the outskirts of Flint, boy you ain't tough, big baller brand, getting brand low cools is getting crumbs, we thumbing through that money look at y'all y'all playing with your thumbs don't know who your daddy is well your ass is getting some we both taking shots the only difference you ain't hitting none usually do this shit for fun but trust me boy i'm not take a report christine you gotta admit that beat is kind of banging okay so the beat was banging (laughs) the beat was banging but you just you don't air do you want that out of your players i no. okay no you you handle it like women and you handle it like men and you you know you take you handle it in the locker room you don't you don't take it outside um and that just that's a championship mentality you you squash it inside not Mm. out in the media but you know they're young guys and i think that you know you have to continue to mentor them sure um, you know, I've had the pleasure of meeting Kyle. He's come to a game or two. Um, mm. such a, a he's fun, a nice guy. He's a such a sweet kid. Yeah. Like such a nice well mannered. You can uh, tell his mom raised him the right way. Literally, um, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting Zoe, um, but either way, just I would I would have preferred it. You know, it had been handled internally. Sure. So, sure. Yeah, and I'm sure everybody, even other non business executives, yeah, they're would, like. Uh, kind of raise an eyebrow on that. Yeah, like, I mean, it's it's you know, you want camaraderie, you want chemistry. And that just helps poke holes in the chemistry sure. of your team. And then that translates on the court, and you don't want that. Sure. And, and those who aren't familiar with this situation, also, uh, just to freshen you up, yes, that Kyle Kuzma's mom went on Twitter mm. and informed the guys. She said, okay, guys, enough of the games being played. It's time to get back to work. Hey, mama. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so that's what happened, guys. That's what the mamas line- do. Hello. I ain't mad at it. Right. That's the reason why I came out the way that I did. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> but listen, guys, um, let's make sure that we mention these things because these things are important to the community. Um, we also have something that's um, a, be going, to, going to become eventually a staple in our south region of Los Angeles. Uh, it, this company goes by the name of Vector90. 
Uh, the movement is ran by uh, none other than Mr. David A. Gross. If you want to check him out, go to his Instagram. I believe it's david.a.gross. Uh, and in this venture, Mr. Gross uh, is providing uh, community enrichment. Um, we're going to touch on that. But before we do that, let's go ahead and make sure um, let's touch on the United Masters. Now, what the United Masters is is a company that was founded by Steve Stout, who is a hip hop mogul. Um, this company basically enables artists who aren't signed to re, uh, retain the opportunity to uh, get their masters to their music. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys aren't familiar to what masters are, that is basically like <laughs> your birth certificate <laughs> to your music. Okay, so and, and the money, yeah, <laughs> as Emma just said, yeah, right. and the money, right? So there, so the the way that the format has been ran for so long um, is that the music labels are owning most artists, ninety five percent of artists is masters. Um, this company right here will allow those artists to retain that, so that they can seek their royalties mm -hmm. and everything else that came in their contract and so they don't have to come back and say well you guys robbed me right. later on right. so check that out um steve stout make sure you look up the instagram page that is at united masters that is at united masters that's one word um let's make sure that we shed light on this topic um domestic violence is never uh an excuse for anyone no. um so what we're going to do is make sure that we inform Everyone that is uh, familiar with the Rich the Kid and Tory Bricks situation. Um, now, there wasn't any domestic violence uh, between those two. But there, what happened was is a, uh, a crew full of villains came inside of Rich the Kid's apartment. I'm sorry, Tory Bricks' apartment, uh, who is an IG model, if that is even a real thing. And essentially, he came in. Uh, he opened the door. Uh, some guys came in with guns. Uh, they, um, it was a robbery. Um, Tori got hit with the gun. She got beat up a couple times. She went on to Instagram to tell her side of the story. Um, my opinion on how that went or what happened or how it happened um, is not important right now. The message that we want to convey to everyone is that it's never okay to put your hands on a woman. I don't care what she's done, what she said. We are men. We are built to last. We are built to be strong. So if you're not strong enough and if you're weak, then don't get a woman, a girlfriend, a wife. Just don't do it until you've bossed up, until you're able to actually, um, you know, handle that situation the right way. Um, that is the update on Mr. Kellen Winslow Jr., former Cleveland Browns tight end. Also, his father was the tight end of the San Diego Chargers. Hall of Fame, by the way, Kellen Winslow Sr. <sighs> Kellen Winslow Jr. has been under fire lately because he actually, they, there's allegations out there that he raped. Uh, and he has a few cases of these allegations. And so he has been arrested and he is now held without bail. Mr. Kellen Winslow, I don't know what happened, but I know that you had multiple problems while you were in the NFL from uh, steroids to just having the wrong behavior attitude. Just no good. We wish nothing but the best for those victims. If those victims uh, come forward, um, let's go ahead and. Dim it a little bit. Uh, DJE, I know I got a couple seconds, a couple minutes. Can you put that uh, in the background? I want to send a huge condolences. Puff Daddy and Faith, I'll be missing you. Um, that Mr. Roger Randolph, brother of Zach Randolph, the forward of the Sacramento Kings, former Memphis Grizzlies, um, his brother Roger Randolph, who one of my friends actually played against, mm -hmm in high school in the McDonald's all-star game passed away last night due to gunshots mm. uh, in the uh, city. Uh, well, it was in Indiana. I believe the city or town was called Marion. Um, we want to send our condolences uh, out to the family and Mr. Zach Randolph. Um, I hope things get better. Yes. We pray for a speedy healing 
and uh, nothing but comfort surrounded around you and your family during this time. We also want to send a huge shout out to Miss, Mrs. Rather and Donovan. Yeah. Yeah. Staple in the community in WNBA and just women's basketball and sports in general. Yes. Um, we send our sincerest condolences. She passed away this week. And if you guys don't know who she is, ladies, if you don't know who she is, please Google her. She is a legend yeah. when it comes to women's basketball and basketball in general. I'm going to go ahead and shout out Jalen Ball, BET's Freestyle Friday. Yesterday, he was at YouTube Studios. Mm -hmm. He is one of the former artists that came to the studio. Um, he did really well. I think he won. They won't know until Wednesday. Um, let's go ahead and make sure. Christine, we're about one minute left. Leave them with some words of encouragement. We always like to leave words of advice. Don't conform and know what you stand for um, and, and continue to fight for that. We, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and we can do it if we all stand together. Guys, always make sure that you, if you are an entrepreneur, always be willing to go broke. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because putting up the dough will eventually have that dough come back tenfold. Mm -hmm. I'm an entrepreneur myself. I know. Give it a shot. You may you may like it. Mm -hmm. um, tune in next week for the ticker report. Okay, same West Coast time, same bat place on AcceleratedRadio.net as we continue to inspire, to aspire, and set the record straight. I'm your host Jay Ticker of the Ticker Report from the city of Inglewood, Accelerated Radio, with the hostess with the Moses. <laughs> Christine Simmons, the president and COO of the LA Sparks. Thank you so much for blessing us with your presence. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been awesome.